You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. All right. Well, tomorrow you have probably figured this out by now. Uh, but now that you have a daughter, the first thing people are always going to ask you about is not how you're doing, right? But how she, how she's doing. <laughs> How's your girl doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> she's doing really well, and I've I've gotten used to that. Like, I mean, that's kind of what I expect <laughs> at this point, honestly, because like my mom does it. <laughs> you really yeah. and, and she she uh, tends to catch herself a little bit. Like she be like. Oh, you know, I'm sorry, son. How are you doing? Like, she just act, act about like Lonnie, but like, I want to talk about her too. So it's like, you know, I, I, it don't it don't really bother me because like I'm worried about how she's doing too. So, no, but man, grandmas is, are notorious funny, for that. Yeah, it is yeah. funny though because I never really thought about that part of it. Like, everybody asking how's Lonnie doing? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you're second forever, man. Second yeah. forever, but it's cool. That's you know we we play that role. But I got to ask you, man. So I wasn't at Hoosier Hysteria, but obviously watched it and saw a lot of the clips. And you know the the one for me, just you know, as a dad with a young daughter, watching you walk out with her was uh was something else. Tell me about that moment, man. That that was like so obviously like when I found out they was coming down, I'm like, hold on, I'm about to, you know what? This is how it happened. Or like how that idea kind of came like to fruition. I was talking to one of my friends and I'm like, <clears throat> what song should I come out to? Like, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I came out to Meek Mill last year and I'm like, what song do I want to come out to? Like, I don't, I really ain't know. I'm calling my brother. Like, I'm calling, you know I mean? like asking my teammates, like we talk about it. But and he was like, uh, we get talking about uh, kind of like, not really like R and B, but like something that's like kind of like different, like a little different. Like obviously, I came out to do the wire, but at first I was gonna come out of the family business, and he was like, and then walk out with Leilani because he knew she was coming. I probably was like, whoa! I said, you, yeah. Now? I'm like, hold on, because I didn't think about that. I'm like, I can, I really can walk out with her. So I'm like, yeah, no doubt. I know she got, she had the headphones, everything. She be she be good. So I'm just glad that I get to like share moments like that with her. You know, like looking back on it. And just like having these experiences, like I'm going through my journey with her, like I'm sharing it with her. And like, yeah. you know, I never really knew I would have a little, you know, my little best friend, you know, to share mm-hmm. my journey with, you know, aside from like, obviously like my siblings and friends that I have, like, this is, this is my baby girl. And I get to share, you know, now all my experiences with her. So. Yeah. It's one it of those moments. Time. It's cool now. 10, 20, 30 years from now, I'm sure it'll be even cooler, you know, just to be able to look back at that and relive that. It's a really yeah. cool moment, man. It's cool that you're you're bringing her along and sharing those moments with her. Man, so, and yeah. it's so special because it's like, she don't even know what's going on right now. Like, she has no <laughs> clue. She don't even remember that. Like, so, like you said, 10, 20 years from now, it'd be, like, just pretty special just to sit down and talk about it, look at pictures because, like, you know, as opposed to when I was a baby and the pictures we look at from then, they not <laughs> that great. These pictures, it's only going to keep getting better. So it's like we're going to be able to look back at clear like videos and pictures, you know, from yeah. whatever we talking about happened. So it's like yeah, it'll be crazy. How's the rest of the family? I know Trey is uh playing at Mississippi College this year, right? So he's yep. getting ready for another season. And uh yeah, they they and they excited about him. And he's excited about just like this new opportunity to you yeah. know, not at JUCO anymore. He's playing division two. So it's like he's on a different stage. It's, it's like a new it's always good to have like a new like, you know, start. I mean it's go, it's just it's just a recurring cycle. So, you know, he he's um he's excited about this season. They got their uh three exhibitions coming up and then oh my god my sisters i like i i am in paying like too like close attention and i'm like i ain't realizing like this whole time i've been growing up they've been growing up too so like yeah 
my mom sending me pictures of Trinity talking about homecoming. I said, homecoming? Homecoming dress? What are we talking about? Like, what do you mean she's going to homecoming? Like, I'm not realizing, oh my God, she is a freshman in high school. Like, I did that when I was a freshman in high school. But I'm not really realizing, yo, like, my little sister's really growing up. Yeah. And then to me, if she's in seventh grade, she um, had her first basketball game the other day. Scored her first points, all that. Nice. So, and then my parents, you know, they, you know, they, they still steering the ship. So, mm-hmm. you know, keeping the girls in line. So it's like, I'm glad that now they get to, you know, raise the girls similar to how me and Trey were, you know, we go now, but they still got two more that they get to. Mm-hmm. They, they enjoy being parents so much and doing it together. So it's like, I'm glad that they don't just, they not just in the crib by themselves. I'm well. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm. I'm sure they'll enjoy it, then and they're enjoying this. Um, like right now, as the girls is growing up, going through middle school, high school. All right. So one more dad question for you: Have you have you figured out what your dad's superpower is? You know, like some dads, it's like singing their kids to sleep, or yeah. playing, or making them laugh. Like, what's your what's your thing? You we laugh a lot. We we do we do laugh a lot. Like even when I call her, like. It, I mean, I, I I really don't know what my superpower would be. You're like, I don't know. I mean, like, I I do put making her, funny faces and making her laugh. Faces, that kind yeah, of like thing. we laugh a lot. Like we always like you feel me. I can make her laugh, and that's kind of just like me thinking like she's it's my daughter, so she mm-hmm. probably don't know what she laughing. At. She's gonna laugh you because like <laughs> so you know. I'm sure she like she's already getting her like little personality so. I mean, she's my daughter, so she's somewhat like me, and I'm a mm-hmm. clown. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But um, now, other than that, we do take. I mean, when she's here with me, like we take a lot of naps. Like, I I put her to sleep. Yeah. Like I don't really like. Like do you do you sing to her? Is it more just kind of rocking? Sing to her, yeah, like rocking her. Really, just she just want to be up under you, like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and she'll go to sleep, like watch tv or something like she she's hilarious like but she get like she sleeps though like she doesn't like just like wake up and like it's crazy like and how fast she started doing that like sleeping through the night yeah like if, if she gonna if she not gonna do nothing else she gonna sleep <laughs> that's good that's <laughs> good you're lucky man <laughs> yeah that, that's and that's i mean that's 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 right now but yeah i can't imagine it would get too much worse so I sure hope not. I will hope she always wants to sleep, get some rest. Mm-hmm. I hope so. I hope so. And you did a camp recently, the uh, the next gen camps. How'd that go? Oh, uh, went well. Um, just to get back in that environment like that, we had this past summer when we had our kids camp at um at at, at Assembly Hall. So it's like it's always fun to be in that environment. Just like thinking back, I remember when I was literally in these kids' shoes, like um. You know, it just seeing how they like how they view us, like you know what I'm saying? Like even we we kind of take it for granted because we do it every day. Like, yeah, like we just we got key card, we get in the assembly hall, we know the code to all the doors. Like it's like kind of like we just hear all the time. So it's like we don't really realize what people or like especially kids, how they see it from the outside, like looking in. So um it's always nice to be here. And then they and it's basketball, like you I mean we I'm 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 gonna talk trash. I'm gonna mess around with the kids, play with them, like, you know, just to give them that experience. What's like the one message you want kids to take away from a camp like that? Is there a, like one specific thing you really try and impart on them? Um, I would say the first thing is really just to be a good person. Like, just treat people the right way, right? Like that, because I mean, people are going like remember a, like a bad experience with you. Like you, your name come up, like, oh, I remember that kid did this, that, and that, and the third. Like, so I mean, really just like, you know, treating people the right way and being nice to people that like they can't do anything for you. You're just, you feel me? Like just being a good, you know, just being a good person. And then on the basketball side of it, just putting in the time. Like that's just the, like you think like when you this young, like, oh yeah, I got, I got time. Like, Like, yeah, you do, but it's like, just work on your game. Like, it's not going to all happen 
like it at once so just keep being consistent in your work yeah if you're an entrepreneur business owner or marketer you know how much your messaging matters bob knight said all of us learn to write in the second grade most of us go on to do greater things and coaches write about some writing but not copywriting the kind of writing that grows your business through memorable messaging and marketing any business can dominate the competition and win big with a world-class copywriter crafting time-saving and money-making emails, landing pages, ads, and more for you. Clay Manley from Speakeasy Sales Copy is one of the world's best, and he lends his talents to small businesses. Clay is an IU alum and an award-winning writer whose words have been trusted by Marvel, Slim Jim, Petco, and many other household names. After getting sick of helping the rich get richer, he left corporate copywriting to focus on helping small businesses grow. If your business could benefit from stronger messaging, then contact Clay at clay at speakeasysalescopy.com. And as a listener of the show, you can sample his proven playbook of million-dollar messaging secrets for free. Just go to speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop for more. That's speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop. This could be your banner year, and your copy is the X Factor. Contact Clay at Speakeasy Sales Copy today. You know, speaking of work, so there's a longtime Indiana fan named Sam Story. He's been a coach, and he sends out this big, long preview email every year. And so he'll talk to people close to the program and kind of get some insight. And one of the people that he talked to this year said, the hardest workers on the team are you, uh, Jalen, Xavier and Miller. And I'm curious what you think when you hear someone like that, someone close to the program that takes such notice of, of your work and your work. Sorry, who, who's it there? I don't know who it was. It was someone close to the program. He didn't give up his sources. It's just oh. someone close, someone close to the program. Oh. But that's not, I've heard that from many people talking about your work ethic and always being in the gym and being a gym rat. And you kind of hear a lot of the same names come up, you know, when they talk about that. And I, from our conversations, I have a feeling you would take a sense of pride in being named one of those guys. I mean, I'm just glad that, you know, um, other people do kind of like notice it, like whether you say something or not, I'm just, you know, glad that I'm working hard. Like, that's just me. Like, just making sure I'm really staying true to myself. Like, it's like, okay, you doing, you know, what you've, you're not shying away from you know, what you do, like just who you are as a, like, like who tomorrow is like, that's what I like. That's just always been me. So I'm just glad that other people, you know, take notice and, you know, realize that, you know, I'm everything that I do or like everything that happens is just all a product of putting the time in. And I mean, that that's pretty much it. What does a a workout look like for you? Like if it's 11 o'clock at night and you're going to just get a workout at the the gym, like what does that look like? Are you having someone come with you? Are you just going by yourself with a ball and a shooting routine? Like what are you typically doing? Yeah, I mean, I'd have one of our GAs and some managers pull up. But right now in the season, like because we practice for so long, like when I go back, I don't want to do too much that'll like, you know, I still want to take care of my body. Right. So it's like just probably really just spot shots, floaters, ball handling, passing, you know. Not really too many cuts or like like nothing like that, just like light on the body, like come in hard, like just. 35 minutes, just focused, like locked in, good reps, like and you shoot and like when I shoot, like I like I try to shoot, I, I everything I do is like. You got to make 10 out of 14 or 9 out of 10 or 7 out of 8. Like, or you can't, like, just, like, focus reps. Yeah. Not really too much time because, you, like I said, like, it's a long season. So just depending on where, like, I am within the week and the schedule is how I work out, like, how hard I work out. Like, I either work out that hard, like, right after practice or – on an off day, depending on, like, if we had a game, practice, like, yeah. So it, it just depends on the situation. But 11 o'clock at night, I'm not doing, like, nothing crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
just doing more of the kind of the repetitive stuff like the, right. like shooting and just the, how, same how's your shot? Yeah. How's your shot feeling? I mean, I know you weren't happy with how you shot, you know, in season last year. I know you're capable of more. I'm sure you've worked on it a ton in the off season. How's it feeling as the season nears? <laughs> Man, I mean, I'm trying to say this in the most humble way. I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I just put it like this. I'm I'm shooting the ball pretty well right now. Um, just I'm just in a good space. I'm in a good flow. Good. So I mean what feel what feels different? Like does something feel different about your shot this season than than last year? Um nothing feels different physically. Um I would say it's just reps and then just the mental side of it, like not really, you know, thinking too much or or it's not like there's no like mental blocks when it comes yeah. to me playing not just shooting the ball but just playing period just be on the floor period mm-hmm. right so it's like like i said like i'm in a good space mentally so i feel like that has a lot to do with why i'm like how like why i've been shooting the ball well along with you know, just the, the reps muscle memory yeah. So nothing like that's all that feels different. Nothing physically though. Like it's like I shoot. The you didn't make any tweaks or anything. No. Nah. No. No adjustments. You know, you did a you did an interview with the Hoosier Hysterics, which was terrific. A lot of people listening to this have probably listened to that. I highly recommend folks do. And there's a lot of stuff you talk about in there that I don't want to talk about here, just so that we can explore some new ground. Um, so I recommend people listen to that, and we'll put a link to it. Um, you know, but there was something that you talked about with him that I wanted to to dig into just a little bit more. And it was about, you know, how last season, you know, once you got past the season, you kind of recognize that you were going through a storm, you know, during the season and weren't always able to recognize it in the moment, but really were able to see that when you stepped away from it. I'm curious if you can give us an example of that, like, like what, what was, you know, something that, that felt like that, whether you felt it in the moment or kind of saw it, uh, you know, in hindsight, and how do you think that'll be different this year now that you've had to go through and are kind of in a, you know, a, a better mental state, like you just said? Um, <clears throat> I kind of like, I always kind of think that like a spirit experience is the best teacher. So I just feel like the set of experience that I, that I, the set of ex- experiences that I like have from just this past season and obviously like before then but just like my freshman year it's it it, it's helped me more than I thought it would while it was going on Mm -hmm. right just like kind of made me kind of appreciate everything more like about the game everything that comes with it like just Obviously, like, like I've never taken a game for granted, but I, it kind of just like just made me like way more hungrier. Hmm. Like, like for me, like completely honest with you, like just like kind of in the like state of like you know my back's against the wall. I gotta respond, mm-hmm. or not? I gotta respond. I get to respond. I have another opportunity my sophomore year to go play basketball and you know really solidify who Tamar Bates is as a basketball player and a human being. So, you know, that's that's kind of what I – like, that's that's my outlook on it. Um, but, now, nah, nah, I did – man, you want to talk about a storm. I'm talking about, like, pouring, like, hail, thunder, mm-hmm. lightning. Like was, was that a combination of what was happening on the court and off the court, just all of it? Yeah, but I feel like more of it was basketball. like. And the stuff that was happening off the court, you know, I was trying to, like, in my head, use basketball as kind of like my therapy. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the court and, you know, everything's not going how you would, you know, like for it to, you from you hitting adversity now, you know, now what do you do? And you're, and this is what you're coming to for therapy. It's like, that's kind of where, like, it, 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 like they conflict each other or they conflicted each other. Mm-hmm. So, 
Support for the Inside Scoop is also presented by Home Field Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. And our friends at Home Field Apparel, they have the widest and most extensive collection of vintage IU apparel that you will find anywhere. And as I'm sure you've come to know, it's not just IU. They started with IU stuff and the Bison logo that kind of took everybody by storm. And they just did a brand refresh, so they keep adding to their IU collection but they're also adding other schools like crazy. They have, I think, 120 schools now. And so as you're looking to shop for yourself or for the IU fan in your life, or even folks who didn't go to Indiana, Home Field Apparel is the place to go for excellent fitting, ridiculously comfortable, washable, vintage gear that really makes a statement uh, about your fandom. And so go to homefieldapparel.com, use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, to get 15% off your first order. That's homefieldapparel.com, promo code H-O-M-E. Now, back to the Inside Scoop. So, you know, you said, you know, you've got this opportunity to, to show everybody who Tamar Bates is as a basketball player and as a person. What, what do you want people to see this season? Like, what do you think will be different about your game this year? Um, just more of an assertiveness, um, just being more sure I'm still, I mean, I'm 19 years old, so I'm still figuring out who exactly I am as Mm -hmm. a basketball player, but I'm working towards it. And I feel like I'm in a good spot right now to where I can help our team win basketball games. But I just want them to see them as whenever 53 checks in the game, like, you know, he's going to do whatever he needs to, to help us win this game. Like he's going to make some, he's going to make winning plays with no matter what's going on. Like, cause I mean, the game is it's a game of runs, like ups and downs, and it is a long game. It's you know, it's about who can stay locked in the longest. So it's like, you know, I'm gonna go out there and you know, lay it all on the line. You know, just really just be ready to compete. I just love to compete. And that's like what's like great about the, like the higher the levels you go in basketball, like cause everybody's like that. Everybody wanna win. Mm-hmm. But it's like now when the athleticism and the, and the skills start to like meet now you gotta like now it's about all the little stuff and within the game which is really the like the big stuff like what people call the little things like that's really what wins games that like you know in college basketball and at the highest level so yeah i mean i i mean that's it i mean i just i like and i'm and again that's something else that i'm still learning like how to win, like how to win games, how to win at a high level. Like I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out, but the only way to figure that out is by playing. So we got an opportunity to go, you know, do something special this year. What do you think you guys figured out about that at the end of the year? You know, because obviously you hit that low in February and then really got on a run at the very end there. You know, Big Ten tournament, winning an NCAA tournament game, winning games that frankly you weren't winning like just weeks prior. What did you figure out and what do you think can carry over from that experience to this year? Um, I feel like what we, I mean, no, we did figure a lot out, but it was just because of the sake of the situation, like how we got to a point of, we want to go to the tournament, but we, we can't lose. Like we literally cannot lose a game. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like guys were doing literally anything to win the game. So you know, we see what we can do when we play with that mindset and like just like that tenacity, like, yo, like, I don't care who does it, when it happens, but we have to win this game. So it's like keeping that mindset when we don't have to win games in the Big Ten tournament to get to the big dance. Like and always keeping that consistency and just like that being our frame of mind every time we go play. So just going through that, winning those games, seeing how the way we play, how hard we play, like going back and watching the film, really like watching the whole games, like throughout that tournament and how hard guys are playing. That's what we like. That's what we're working towards to play like that all the time. You know, we've talked a lot about your transition from high school to college and you know, one of the things that everybody faces is just the physical transition. You know, it's just you're going from playing against high school guys to playing against grown men. You know, one of the things that I've noticed just from, you know, some of the videos that have been posted is you look bigger, like you look sturdier. 
what kind of work did you put in, you know, with Cliff Marshall in the off season? How important is that going to be for you this year? How, how big of a part does that play in your confidence? Man, we was in that room. I'm talking <laughs> like, oh my, it went by fast, but like the days was like, it, they wasn't like super slow, but like, I mean, I, like we about to be playing now. So now we're looking back on it, but man, we was in there in the weight room and it was just a commitment to not only coach Cliff, but myself, like to really taking my nutrition seriously. Cause like we can do all the lifts we want, but I have to eat. Like I, I gotta, gotta compensate that with a certain amount of calories every day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we, we locked in in the weight room. Me and coach Cliff had an agreement. We wanted, so you at the end of the season, I was at 185 into the summer. Or beginning like fall, I went to at two hundred. Wow, really? So, and I and I continued to work towards that, and I was feeling better. Like you know, because you never really know. Like not all weight is good weight, but like as I was, <laughs> well, I, I, I know that well. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm putting this weight on, I'm good, like I'm continuing to feel better. I can do more things on the floor, especially on the defensive end. In an offensive end as well. So, I mean, it's like just on both ends of the floor, I'm feeling better. I, you know, more explosive, faster. So, we continuing to put on weight. And I'm at 198 right now. Right. So, that's probably where I play at. But, man, had a great summer in the weight room. That was the number one. That was the number one thing on my list, honestly. Because from a basketball standpoint, you know, that's what I've been doing. And I know what I'm going to work on here. But, What's the like most important thing for me? Like I have to be able to compete physically too. Yeah, and I, I like I I wasn't like gifted with like just like being just big like out of high school. So I'm proud of myself too. Like honestly, like because like I've always been like called like skinny kid. Like like mm-hmm. like we he wiry like he uh, uh, every anything you name up anything they got. You feel me? I'm 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 a I got I'm a dog, so I'm like I'm telling people I might look light, but I'm heavy though. Like you feel me? I'm saying mm-hmm. like I'm talking crazy. I don't care. Like I'm still like type strong. I really wasn't, but now I am. Put the weight on, so I'm glad I was uh able to have a good summer in the weight room. You know, speaking of this talk about working out and our conversation earlier about work ethic, have you seen the Redeem Team documentary yet? Have I? I mean, I figured I'll you probably, probably had. <laughs> I probably watched it about, about, about eight or nine times. I All right, you. so what what story am I going to ask you about? I don't, what story? Probably the, I don't know. Probably the one that everybody's seen when Kobe yes. like, ran through, probably saw chess, first played the game. I know they're going to run, you last screen up, boom. Randy okay, well, it's not that one. So it's not that one, actually. So the one that really that really made me think about you was when the guy, I think Carmelo and Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, they're all talking about how they were out at the club and they came back at 4, 4.30 in the mm-hmm. morning and Kobe they see Kobe it. going the other way to work out. <laughs> and I yeah. thought that's that reminds me of Tamar. I, I said, I bet I bet he watches this and appreciates that story of Kobe. What would you think when you were watching that? I mean... What I what I thought was like it's not like like it's fine like it's cool to not go out and go to sleep and go work out early in the morning like that's like that's not lame like because if Kobe Bryant doing it anybody could do it so mm-hmm. it's it's okay to not go out like that's fine like you don't have to do that and obviously like sometimes you can you know have some fun do but at that time you know they. Trying to go win a gold medal. So, but then again, like, like you said, like, I appreciate that. Like, just like, I appreciate every, like, he not the only player, like, with a, obviously, he wanted to, he got one of the best work ethics, like, ever, but there's other people who do speak that language. Mm hmm. Yep. So, I want to talk about your role on the team. Like, how do you view your role right now? And roles can change, obviously, as you go through the season and there's ebbs and flows and players develop. How do you view your role right now? Um, I see me, I mean, as a two-way player, 
um, aggressive on the offensive end. You know, I want to score the ball for us. Kind of be like that X factor just because we have so many threats. But just being on the wing as opposed to, um, you know, being a point guard or on a block with race and trace, like, you, nah, I'm, I'm on the wing. Like, because it's like, you got to deal with them. You got to deal with X. And when you swing it to the wing, I do with Fino. I do with me. I do with Miller. Like CJ. Like pick your poison. League, like you know what I'm saying. So it's like being that X factor on the wing. Um, who I, who affects the game on both ends of the floor, right? Just right, like just wreaking havoc, organized chaos. I would say. Mm-hmm. But I mean, no matter you know when I'm in the game, you know. Which and everybody is kind of, I would hope, you know, thinking like we just want to make one in place. We're not going to panic. They're going to make runs. We're going to make runs. But, you know, we're going to play the long game. Yeah. And how have practice has been going? Like, I mean, if, yeah. I mean from, from what everybody says, it's been just crazy competitive. Yeah. We've been going at it, right? And um, this Saturday – Oh, everybody's like just like I mean can't ready to beat up on someone else. Yeah, I mean we've been playing each other for four months. <laughs> like so it's like I wouldn't say it's like like dwindled down because like guys like we still compete, you know, they throw it up, put 20 minutes on the clock, like we're gonna go at it. Mm-hmm. But just to play against somebody else, and now we all excuse me, playing with each other and like seeing what we look like as a team, like everybody on the same team, that's um that's gonna be um it's gonna be exciting. So practice has been the- great, but I know everybody ready to play somebody else. Who on the team brings out your competitive juices the most? Like when you get matched up against them in a drill or you know in a possession, and you love them, your friends, but you you know they just really bring it out in you. Hmm. It's a few people I could say, but I know. Let me see. I'm a, ha- you know what? I'm, a, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, Ant. Like and he, he a laugh when he hear this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and it's not just me. Like, every talking crazy to everybody. Like, <laughs> like he all go. Like, he's like, you know what? Ant in a game, like you know what he about to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? He gonna a- crash. Anthony Leo. Ant. Mm-hmm. But. I mean, we all like kind of get after, but I, I I get what you're saying though. But me and X definitely go at it. Me and Fino, like, I just had to say Ant because Ant really be chatting. Like, and I get to talking back to him. <laughs> but like, <laughs> certain from certain times, like, because sometimes, like, when you get like saying too much, okay, now I gotta, <laughs> well, I got him, I hit him up, business. I gotta let you hear me. <laughs> So I don't really say I try to I've gotten better at that, like just not saying nothing back. But I'm a mm-hmm. talk though. So pick your spots a little better. Yeah. Yeah. So I had uh Anthony was actually on here. We did uh I did an interview with him last week. And so one of the questions that I asked him that a lot of the people in our community they wanted me to ask you too, is like of all your teammates, what is the single individual skill that has improved the most? Like Trace's shooting or Jordan's ball handling or, you know, Logan's post play, like whatever it is, like what individual player skill do you think has improved the most that people will be really surprised by when they see it on the court this year? You know what? I will honestly say racist shooting. Really? He's been shooting the ball really well, like, consistently, like, knocking it down. I'm like, and, you know, it seems like, you know, like he's in a good space as well. Right? Like, just from a confidence standpoint and, you know, he big you dog. He, yeah, he's he a vet. He, 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 he the mm-hmm. old man in the locker room, so. You know who Anthony said? He okay. said race and he said race and trace is shooting. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. It's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Like 
And that only helps everybody else on the team. That only makes mm-hmm. us that much better. They shoot the ball. Like you put Trace at the top of the key and you can't help too crazy because he will make it. Mm-hmm. So it just make the team better. What about for you? What do you think is the individual skill that's improved the most for you that we'll notice when we see you get out there? Um, I would say really my my decision making, just like seeing mm-hmm. the game slower, like making plays like for other for my teammates. Like just like at a like just in transition and half court at a pick and roll, like just like really, you know, like I said, like making plays, like getting guys shots. Cause it's like like I said earlier, like I have that experience of also playing in my freshman year. So I see the game better now. It's slowing down for me. So that's that's probably it, but yeah, yeah, that yeah. You know, and I know one of the things that you were talking to the hysterics about was actually getting some time playing point guard in practice, which was, you know, which was great to hear, obviously, is, you know, just uh, an added dimension to your game. I'm curious, you know, one of the things that you guys did a lot more at the end of last season um, than at the beginning was running that pick and roll and especially running the pick and roll and getting it to the roll man. I mean, those lobs to trace, it was just like over and over again in the Purdue game, in the Michigan game. Is that something that you guys are continuing to incorporate into the offense and that, you know, I know a lot of times it was X running it. Is that something where now the responsibility for initiating is kind of spreading out to you and Jalen, you know, and other guys uh, yeah. on the team? Right. Just having multiple people on the floor that can handle the ball. And yeah, that's definitely going to be an offense. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, huh? Like, what are we talking about? You got Trace you getting behind. He's getting behind the roller. He's getting behind a guy that's guarding him every time because he's so fast. He probably jump higher than him. Mm-hmm. Hold up there, he'll get it. Mm-hmm. So, right, like, but yeah, just having multiple people that can come off of those ball screens and make a good play to either trace. Well, it's usually an empty side pick and roll. So, you know, if the guy didn't nail helps, you kick it three, something. Mm-hmm. Just getting something good out of that um, that offense. What's well, late? I don't want to keep you too long. Obviously, you guys are going to be playing. We're recording this on Thursday night. You play in two days, which we all can't wait to watch. You know, one of the last questions I have for you is just about internal leadership on the team. Uh, you know, because it's something the best teams are always, you know, internally led. Uh, and, you know, you guys obviously have a lot of veterans. And so I think we all hope that's a, a strength. How would you assess the, the internal leadership? Uh, and how much you guys are self-led as opposed to always having to be led by the coaches? Um, I think it's been pretty good right now. We can get better. We can be better at it. Um, especially with like the guys that are even the guys that are older than me. Like I'm only a sophomore, but and like we obviously, like you said, like we have a lot of veterans, older guys, seniors, juniors. So, um, you know, I would say it's it is good, like to where it works. Right. And like guys will say something first before the coaches have to say anything. Right. Just having a player led team. But everybody's so invested that everybody's going to throw in what they have to say at some point, you know, just because everybody want to win. Yeah. So, um, no, I, th- I think I think it's pretty good right now. You know, Last question for you, you know, looking ahead to this exhibition game, and I know, you know, it's a game you guys aren't going to take anybody lightly, Um, you know, but as fans, it can sometimes be challenging to figure out, you know, what can we take from what we're watching? Because there does tend to be a talent disparity and an athleticism disparity in in these games. What do you and the team, what do you guys want to get out of these games? Like, as as, as you guys go back and watch it, like, what are the things that you're going to look at to say, okay, this was, this was, you know, positive for us. We got some good stuff accomplished here. Besides winning, of course. Um, our deep, like executing our defensive concepts, right? Like rec- recognizing like the spots that we're in and talking on defense, communicating, uh, communicating our switches. Really, a lot of stuff on defense. Like that'll really be the main portion of. Obviously, we we'll watch offense. Like making sure we're executing our our base offense. You know, moving without the ball, sharing it, making the right play, right? Executing our offense. So really, just execution and. 
obviously making free throws and, you know, making shots and, you know, executing in transition, like, you know, giving it up in the break. Like, so mainly like just like execution of stuff that we can control. But obviously we know it's a athleticism and, and um like, like gap or whatever, but it's still basketball and they're an opponent and they're coming to assembly hall. So. That's right. I take care of business. Well, hey, man, I'm glad we had a chance to do this before the season started. And, uh, and I think we can let folks know that we're going to keep this going through the season, maybe try some different formats, but, uh, but keep it going. We always appreciate your insight uh, and thoughtfulness just about the game and yourself and the team. So uh, glad, to, uh, glad to keep this going. Yes, sir. And I'd be tuned in to Draymond Green podcast and like how he be how like after he did a um like like after the finals when he was doing an episode after every game, I was like, you know what? I would I probably would do something like that. But like, that's kind of like bold, like <laughs> Draymond crazy. <laughs> Draymond <laughs> like, is crazy smart. in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like he's so smart. Like I, that's why I listen to it because like he is he's like smart, like he knows the game and he's a winner because he won four championship. So Mm-hmm. I'm listening to what you guys say. He's hilarious, though. Oh my god, <laughs> he is. It's a great podcast. Yeah, really, I mean, and he is. I mean, he's. You know, his he he'll be interesting because he's either going to be the best on TV, or he's going to be a great coach. Yeah. But can you know it? Uh, his volatility emotionally, you know, could be interesting as a coach. But he's going to do one of those two things because he is right. one of the smartest. I think. I don't think he'll go to TV first. I think he'll be a coach first. Yeah. He's too competitive. Yeah. <laughs> he want to be out there. We'll see when that time comes. But yeah. in the meantime, we'll just sit back and watch the Warriors get ready to repeat. Mm-hmm. Well, and hey, you ever want to talk post game? I mean, we have a show that goes live after every game. You're yeah. welcome anytime. And yeah. we can always hop on and record. Anytime you have thoughts, hit me up and uh, you'll have... A lot of audience members very excited to hear them. So All right. it's your spot. Cool, man. Good luck right. on Saturday. And uh, we'll talk you. soon. All right. Cool. Thanks, tomorrow. Yeah.